Hello and welcome back to whatever this is. Today I thought I would take you through a couple of my favourite paleontology books. Uh, some of these are textbooks, some of these are more popular books, some of them blend the two a little bit. These are just some books that I have really enjoyed over the years while I was studying and since, and I thought that you might like to know about them if you don't already. Uh, I think a lot of people who are into paleontology will know about these books already, but if you're just getting started or you want to explore a little bit more, then you may not have heard of them, and I think they are an excellent starting point for anyone. Of course, there are a whole bunch of other books that I could mention, and I have sat on my shelves, but I thought these ones were just a sort of good overview of A, what I've enjoyed the most, and B, things that could be useful for you if you are looking to study paleontology or just get into paleontology a little bit deeper than, I don't know, YouTube videos and documentaries that aired on the BBC 20 years ago. So I figured for number one we'd start at the beginning with an introduction to paleobiology and the fossil record by Mike Benton and David Harper. Uh, this is a really fantastic textbook for anyone sort of getting into paleontology at a slightly higher level. This is a university level textbook, but as the title suggests, it's the introductory textbook. So if you have a decent grasp on science, biology in particular, um, for example, you've done A-levels, or you've just done GCSEs, but you've been doing a bit of reading around the subject, um, or if you're in America, you've done high school, then this is a great textbook for you to start exploring paleontology at a deeper level of understanding. The book goes through sort of background concepts, uh, a little bit about geology, taphonomy, how fossils are formed, and then it sort of goes more through fossil groups of organisms. So we go all the way through from what would be considered the most basal organisms, all the way up to the higher vertebrates, uh, dinosaurs, mammals, and a little bit about ichthology as well at the end. There's bits on extinction uh, and the history of the earth. It's a great all-rounder. Because it's such a good all-rounder, it doesn't go into sort of the heavy detail that you would need if you were to study a subject more deeply, but that's not what this book is for. This book is an introduction. <laughs> uh, from this book, it's of course got all the sources in, as I think every book uh, on my list actually does. It's, it's got citations and things in. Uh, so you can go and read around a subject if something you read really interests you, if, say you're very interested in the Permian-Triassic extinction, you can then look at the sources used in here and go off on your merry journey, um, or alternatively fall down a Wikipedia hole and use the sources there. It's a great place to start. I figured I would stick with Mike Benton for the second book, uh, and we have his latest book, uh, which is The Dinosaurs Rediscovered. So this book takes the topic of dinosaur paleontology and uses that as a way to investigate how paleontology as a science is done in the modern day. So not only do you learn a bit about dinosaurs, you're mostly in this book learning about the sort of techniques that we use these days and the people doing the research, uh, which is a really cool thing, but then you're also getting your dinosaur fix. So can't, can't really go wrong with that one. The little guy on the cover is Sinusropteryx, and he's a really important dude because the first dinosaur that we discovered colour in and were able to figure out the real colour uh, and his story plays a big part in this book. Uh, I like to think that I am mentioned in this book. <laughs> There's one like sentence at the end of one of the chapters that mentions the students at Bristol who have had their research published and I'm one of them so um, I'm in this book. Kinda. Another textbook. Uh, this is actually one that I picked up after I finished my degree um, on a recommendation from my uh, supervisor, boss, friend at the Great Plains Dinosaur Museum, Carrie. Uh, he recommended this book as sort of the textbook for comparative anatomy and I would have to agree with him after having read it. Uh, this is Vertebrates, Comparative Anatomy, Function, Evolution by Kenneth Cardong. Uh, this is a fantastic book, as you can see I've got like, a bunch of post-it notes in where I've been reading it and finding useful bits of information. Uh, it's a fantastic primer on anatomy, uh, not just uh, skeletons and bones as 
you might think we pretty much exclusively use in paleontology, but this goes through every system in the body, so it'll take the axial skeleton, the appendicular skeleton, but then also the muscle systems, the nervous system, uh, and go through not only just how they are today in various groups, but also how they came to be, so the evolution of those different systems. Definitely a good book to get if you are interested in anatomy, if you're interested in the evolution of vertebrates in general. This actually isn't the most current edition, I am not sure what edition this book is on, this is the sixth edition. Textbooks are expensive and I cannot afford new textbooks, so this is just my tip in general. If you're also someone else in that boat where textbooks are prohibitively expensive, then check out things like Amazon Marketplace, Waterstones uh, in the UK has a sort of marketplace website where I managed in my degree to pick up one of my textbooks, one edition below the one they recommended for three quid as opposed to 70, so that was pretty good. Um, always check these, if you live in a university town then chances are that charity shops, second hand bookshops will have textbooks, especially if it's one that everyone had to get at the beginning of the year, people will sell those on or give them away. It's always worth asking around. I'm going to do two books at once because I can and they're by the same guy and they're on a they're on a similar subject. Not the same subject but a similar subject. Uh, these are Anthony J Martin's books, I know I've mentioned them before because I really like them. Uh, these are Dinosaurs Without Bones and The Evolution Underground. So both of these books are on the topic of ichnology, which is the study of animal traces, and in this case trace fossils. So that would be things like burrows, footprints, coprolites, they're really useful for studying because they show us more about behaviour than perhaps a body fossil, which is the fossil of the actual animal itself. From a footprint or a trackway of footprints you can tell how fast an animal was moving. If there's a nest then you can see, oh well this thing was nesting, uh, and it might exhibit some behaviours. Uh, around that, like maybe even parental care. The first one is Dinosaurs Without Bones, as it suggests, it's about dinosaurs and they do not have bones. <laughs> it's, it's about the traces that dinosaurs have left behind. Um, I actually picked this book up because I saw one of the figures inside it online and I was like, I have to read that book. This is the figure in question, <laughs> if you're wondering. It's a scientific calculation of the velocity of Brachiosaurus sick and whether it could kill a small dinosaur. So, I mean, that's all the recommendation I really need to give this book, to be honest, isn't it? <laughs> but it's really interesting and um, ichnology is a topic that I didn't really vibe with at university. I thought, oh, okay, sure, whatever. Um, and this book really made me pay attention to it and uh, I think it's super cool now. Uh, so then obviously I bought his second book, um, well not his second book, but his second book in this sort of style series. This book takes ichnology both wider and narrower, so uh, in this book we're looking at just any animal to be honest, um, but then we're looking at things that borrow and live underground, uh, whereas the other book was just dinosaurs but all their traces. Uh, this is really cool, it goes all over the place. Uh, we start off with alligators and looking at their burrows and how they live and how that's good for survival, uh, to looking at cities that people have built underground, um, including like Montreal, which has a huge underground network. Uh, a bunch of really cool stuff and a bunch of places mentioned here that I now really want to visit. Uh, but fantastic book. Uh, if, if you enjoyed Dinosaur Cell Bones, you will enjoy this one, or vice versa. Because I don't want to make this video too long, I'm just going to mention one more book, uh, quite a recent book, and that is the Encyclopedia of Dinosaurs, The Theropods. This is the dinosaur book that I always wanted as a child. It actually says in the introduction of this book that it was going to be a bigger and wider, more encompassing book. It got to the point where they realised that if they included more dinosaurs, so other groups of dinosaurs other than just the theropods, that the book was going to become just an extremely heavy tome that nobody would buy because it would cost so much. So they've decided to split it into different books. I think the sauropods is on its way and I will definitely be buying that. Just the whole way this book is set out is what I've always wanted from a paleontology book. Uh, it's also extremely accessible so 
older kids or kids who are really into paleontology um, will be able to pick this book up. Uh, I, I would honestly, I would recommend it for younger kids because they can look at it for the art and then timelines and things like that. And as they grow, they'll be able to get more and more and more out of this book. These were the pages that made me go, oh, I've got to have that book. All these illustrations of different real fossils and then bits that are missing, you can fill it in exactly where it is in the body. Um, yeah. Oh my god. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Of course, even within the theropods, there are so many different dinosaurs. So the way they've tackled that is to sort of look at records or record holding dinosaurs within each group of theropods. So uh, in the section where they go through all the different groups of theropods, because there's like a bunch of different sections in this book and each one of them is fantastic. Uh, but in the section where they go through all the dinosaurs, they'll take like the abelosaurids and show you the biggest one and the smallest one and then have a little bit of information about the oldest and at the time of publishing the most recent. I think out of any of these books, if you're a dinosaur enthusiast, this is the one for you. Um, especially if you're not quite confident enough at that higher level yet. Um, this is a good introduction to that because again, this book is sourced all the way through. It's got the papers that each of the things that they are looking at came from and the museum that it came from. Uh, it's got so much background information packed into a very, very accessible book. I don't have it with me, I'll put it on screen somewhere, but I feel another book that does this sort of really in-depth look at taxa and specimens individually is um, The Dinosaurs of the British Isles by Lomax and Tamura. Similar comments about that one, obviously it's just focusing on the British Isles. If you're someone who researches dinosaurs or is interested in dinosaurs in Britain, I think it's a fantastic book. I would definitely recommend it. Cool! That's my books. I have a bunch more. I could do a whole other video on this. If you liked it, maybe I will. I also wanted to give a note about books in science in general. Um, the thing with books, even textbooks, is that science currently moves so fast, in including paleontology, I would say especially paleontology to be honest, but it moves so fast that the nature of a book is that the second it's published it's out of date. That being said, books are a fantastic place for you to get a wide range of background knowledge in one go. So a paper individually might be way more up to date. As I speak, obviously this book is notably out of date because Thanatotherestes was published officially yesterday. So that's not gonna be in here unless it is, but it's called unnamed. But even so, even if it is in there and it's unnamed, it's, it's still unnamed. Uh, and so you might not initially put the two together. But I always find myself falling back to my textbooks. If I've got a project on a topic that I'm not so familiar with, then I will go back to my books and start there. And from there, I get an idea of where I want to go, where I might want to explore, and I can use them as a jumping off point and a background research point for the people who have come before me. But as a starting point, books get my vote. Speaking of books getting my vote, I, well, I had a Goodreads that I sometimes update. I'm not very good at it and I don't ever write reviews, but if you wanted to follow me on there, then I'll leave that down below. I will also be including all of the titles and authors of these books down below so you can find them and put them into your little Google very easily. Did I miss out a book that you think I really should have included? Please let me know down below and if I haven't read it then I can read it and we can all share book recommendations and fun stories of reading. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you have a new book to add to your reading list. I will see you in the next one. Basically never buy a text with me, is what I'm saying. Sorry, I know that's how you make your money. <laughs>